Hi everyone, you know when you come to a wireless store, you can spot a Windows phone from 15 feet away? You know why? This is because of the Metro design. Metro is a language of design, which is different from programming languages such as C-sharp or JavaScript. In this video, I'll show you how to take Windows Phone Metro design language and make it yours to create your stories, your apps. I'm Kevin Ashley, architect evangelist and a Windows Phone champion. So, What's your goal as an app developer? You probably want your app to make top rankings and generate lots of downloads, right? Maybe make some money. Let me share a secret shared by all top apps in the Windows Phone marketplace. All of them use Metro design principles. Games are a separate category because they have highly customized graphics. So if you have an app that you want to port from iOS or Android or have a new app, don't just copy them. Listen to this video, understand Metro design language, and make the most out of your app. Metro is inspired by the transportation, Metro system, or subway, where signs are easy and quick to read, and it allows our users to find their way quickly. Transportation graphics is simple, elegant, universal, and somewhat minimalistic. It's also full of innovation. Metro uses motion and animations beyond anything you've seen in the phones before. It uses typography, one of the key elements in any design. And let's declare it, type is beautiful. Our consumers love Xbox, and who doesn't like playing games? And when we look at Xbox, it's all about this powerful animation and transitions, which brings content to life, but doesn't overpower it. It's always the balance. We call it Metro because it's modern and clean, it's fast and it's emotion. It's about content and typography, and it's entirely authentic. And it doesn't matter if you're not a strong designer. In fact, you don't have to be a designer to build Metro apps. So, several light tools such as Visual Studio and Expression Blend, packed with Metro design controls, make it easy to use pre-built design elements in the Metro style to make applications that look just like those built into the phone. And, of course, there's great guidance on the user experience available on MSDN, Microsoft Developer Network, and I encourage you to read it. So let's talk a bit about the principles of Metro. There are just a few of them. And this is more of a conversation. It doesn't have to be like, hey, make your design this way. It's actually, how do you interpret this principle to make the most out of this language? So the first principle is making it clean, light, open, and fast. And this is what we call a fierce reduction of unnecessary elements. Think borders, shades, rounded corners. Don't bring the decor to the new world. Instead, make your content the king. Use standard Visual Studio controls in your app. All this advice is to help you push your rankings and downloads to the top on the Windows Phone Marketplace. In my role, I work with many partners and top apps use all these design principles. Another principle is type is beautiful. Not only it's attractive to the eye, but it can also be very functional. The right balance of weight and positioning can create a visual hierarchy without the need of borders or shades. Additionally, well-placed type can help you lead to more content. Metro is a pioneer for mobile device typography. So in the Visual Studio, we can use pre-built styles such as phone text large style for font size, weight, and the name. Our next principle is alive and emotion. Motion makes the UI feel responsive and alive, but we also want the motion to serve context to improve usability. And that's why transitions in Metro are not just there to impress, they actually help people navigate and add another dimension and depth to the UI. So use motion to tease your users into what's next. And if you look at the use of live tiles, it gives you a way to engage your users, serve that content up. We'll talk about the magic that you can bring to the live tiles to make your apps really popular. Another principle is content, not Chrome. This idea is to delight through content, not through decoration. If it's a user picture, let them just tap on the picture instead of several layers of borders and shades. And let's serve up all that great content and bring it to the foreground. Reduce the visuals that are not content and make content the UI. Design to the form factor. Don't try to be what it's not. Mobile apps cannot be simply copies of desktop apps or websites. Practice makes perfect. Let's practice how to build all those beautiful apps. Most of the design work has been done for you, thanks to designers and developers at Microsoft. And our tools make it easy to use pre-built design elements in the Metro style to make applications that look just like those built into the phone. So we'll start with two controls that, in my opinion, highlight most of the Metro UI experience. Speed, motion, transitions, and content. Let's talk about panorama and pivot controls. 
To get started, all you need to do is to select a panorama or pivot template project from the Visual Studio or Expression Blend. And by the way, sometimes developers ask me about the difference between Visual Studio and Expression Blend. Visual Studio is a pure development environment. It's more powerful than any other development tool I personally have ever seen on any platform. You can build your phone app just with Expression Blend and never look at the Visual Studio. Or you can use Expression Blend to polish your product, to add animations, transitions, and make it more appealing. It's your choice. So back to our controls. Panorama powers many built-in apps, people, music and videos, Xbox games app, part of the office, and more. Unlike standard apps that are designed within the confines of the phone screen, Panorama offers a unique experience to view content by using a long horizontal canvas that extends beyond the boundaries of the screen. So the user can flick through the screen really easily, and Panorama keeps teasing the user to go further by giving them a glimpse of what's next. Pivot Control is used in apps such as Mail or Outlook in Windows Phone, and it also allows users to experience content by flicking through pivot items, and they are just like tabs, specifically designed for touch and metro. So pivot items are not really tabs, they don't have those borders, and that's how metro makes use of type. Remember beautiful type? It's there to help move through the content. So whenever you create a XAML page in the Visual Studio, it automatically includes an application bar, which is commented out in the markup which means it's invisible when you build the app. Metro recommends moving core buttons from the application page to the application bar. You will discover many standard controls in the Visual Studio or Expression Blend toolbox, and you can bring them to the app by simply dragging them from the toolbox to the designer. You notice that these controls are already designed for Metro using the same Metro principles we discussed earlier. Buttons are simple and clean cut. Checkboxes and radio buttons have a clean Metro appearance. You'll also notice the map control, which makes building navigation-based apps very easy. Media element, which can play audio and video. We'll cover the ad control in greater detail in another video on monetization about how to make your apps pay. There is also layout controls, such as the grid and canvas. If you need more controls, take a look at Silverlight Toolkit, available on CodePlex or NuGet, a package manager for Visual Studio that makes adding third-party controls a snap. When we build Windows Phone apps, we have a choice of technologies to use. We can build apps using Silverlight, XNA, or both. In this video, we'll talk about Silverlight apps. XNA is optimized for game development, speed, and high frame rates. Silverlight takes advantage of an event-driven model, which makes it easy to develop multi-page apps. And as a developer, you can use a combination of both to design your application. So the project template that I used creates a Silverlight app and Panorama and Pivot are Silverlight or XAML controls. So XAML is a markup language that defines our user interface. And for the code behind, you have a choice of a .NET language such as c -sharp. So if individual controls are already designed with Metro principles, does it mean I don't need to think about my design? Not at all. Combining your controls with Metro in mind is the art that you can bring to your story, your application. And here are some examples. It's a good idea to keep a consistent alignment for all controls on your page. When possible, buttons should be placed on the application bar. There is no need for closed buttons. Users can use the hard back buttons to navigate away from your app. Think again about the fierce reduction and make your story great. In this demo, I'll show you how to create a new project in the Visual Studio. And uh, in this project, we'll use um, a panorama control. So I go to the Visual Studio, open my Visual Studio, and then say New Project. And uh, I can see different templates. So I'm going to choose Windows Phone Panorama application. And you can see this nice background it has, thanks to our Microsoft designers. The next screen prompts me for a target uh, Windows OS version. And I'm going to choose the latest one, which is OS 7.1. And that's how the SDK calls the 7.5 operating system. And uh, I give the Visual Studio one, one second. So the Visual Studio generates um, a XAML file for me, which is the file that you see on the right-hand side. So this is the uh, script that I have for uh, my user interface. And on the left-hand side, I see a, a visual representation of the same file, which is the panorama control. And panorama control is really, really great. Uh, I also like this type of application because it uh, shows you how to how to use view models. So in the future, when you uh, create your application, take a look. Uh, notice that the uh, panorama control is actually bound to the view model in the app. 
And uh, next, I'm just gonna launch my application. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Now, when you use a Windows Phone emulator, remember that you don't have to completely reboot the Windows Phone emulator every time. And actually it does automatically. While the emulator is booting, I'm gonna show you the main page code behind file. So as you can see, it's very, very simple. This is the uh, code behind file in C Sharp uh, for my main page, the page that opens first on the application screen. And also, it makes sense to take a look at the app.zamo.cs, which is a code behind file for um, the uh, application itself. Okay, so by this time, my emulator should be booting already. So I'm waiting until the emulator is launching my application. At this point, the operating system is fully booted. And now I can see my application live. And this is a typical Panorama app. So it has multiple items. Remember all these Metro UI topics we discussed in this video. And um, the Panorama itself data binds to some sample data. And that's why you see this uh, first item, uh, second item, and, uh, and you can actually uh, flick through the application and, um, and look at it. And this concludes my first demo, just to show you guys how the panorama control looks like.